there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this candy wrapper box that I absolutely fell in love with and had to make it my own. I wanna give credit to Samantha Clayton for the original idea, as well as fellow UK demonstrator D. Copus Reed. She added some diagonal score lines to make the box go together easier. And I decided to resize this to fit two tea lights. Now there's obviously other things that you could fit in here. I know this will fit a Ferrero Rocher. You can find a number of sweet gifts to include in this, but it's such a great project, especially for the holidays. But I thought I'd do a fun little thank you box here. I'll be sure to include links to both Samantha's and Dee's projects in my detailed blog post so you can go check them out. I loved this idea and just had to give it a try. So let me show you how easy it is to make this. We're gonna start with a piece of Call Me Clover cardstock that measures four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And along the four and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at half of an inch, one and a half inches, three inches, and four inches. Then I'm gonna rotate it to the long side, the six and a half inch side, and we're only gonna score between the second and third horizontal score lines. Let me show you a quick template. Ignore the diagonal score lines for now, but what we're gonna score first are these vertical score lines only between the second and third horizontal score lines. I'm gonna grab a ruler to make this a little bit easier. And I'm gonna line that up at one and a half inch. Now I'm a little bit to the left of the score line to make room for my stylus. We'll score that at one and a half inches. And I'll move that down to three inches. And then four and a half inches. And then we're gonna score at six inches, but all the way down. So again, we did score lines at one and a half, three, four and a half, in between the second and third horizontal score lines, and then six all the way down. I'm just gonna go in and reinforce those really quickly. Okay, and now we're gonna do two score lines but only down to that first horizontal score line. And we're gonna do that at two and a quarter and five and a quarter. And I'm just gonna flip my cardstock here and do the same thing, two and a quarter and five and a quarter. And it's okay that that was scored on the other side because we're really just using that as a guide to do our diagonal score lines. Okay, so I'm gonna put my Simply Scored away just for a little bit, we will bring it back. And I'm now going to score the diagonal score lines. So using those little short score lines, we're gonna meet that up at a 45 degree angle with these score lines in the center. And the easiest way to do that is to place your stylus where you wanna start, then bring your ruler up to it. And I'm just again to the left of where I wanna score to leave room for the stylus. And then I'll score that at the diagonal. And I'm gonna do all of those diagonal score lines now. Okay, now all those diagonal score lines are done. I don't know if you can see that in the light, but here's that template again. And I will have a picture of this template on my detailed blog post. You can find that link in the description of this video. All right. So now the last thing we need to do is to add a little bit of texture. Now this part is optional, but I really do love the finished look. And you can see that along this little half inch section on either side. And the way to do that is bring in your Simply Scored and I am just going to score every eighth of an inch, stopping at that first horizontal score line. We're gonna do that all the way down. Then we're gonna rotate it and do the exact same thing every eighth of an inch down to that first horizontal score line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch it, but it really doesn't take as long as you think it would. Okay, now that that's done, I'm just gonna reinforce the score lines one more time, right next to those eighth of an inch score lines. 
and there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna fold and burnish on some of the score lines. So let's do the second and third score lines in the center. And we can also fold on this half inch one along the side that we scored all the way down. And then the rest of the score lines, we just need to gently fold on. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and fold kind of backwards on the ones with the eighth of an inch score lines. I don't wanna burnish that because I don't want to smooth out the, all those score lines we made. And again, I'm folding that kind of backwards. Same thing with this side, just gently folding. And then I'm gonna just pinch on these diagonal score lines just gently because we don't want creases in other places besides the score lines. I'll do that. And then I'll do the same thing on these center sections again, not pinching too hard, but just enough to get the paper to start giving. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and adhere our designer series paper and pool party cardstock. And we're using the Animal Expedition designer series paper. I love this series of papers. There's a fun side and then there's a pretty pattern side. So we're gonna use this beautiful Call Me Clover and Pool Party pattern. And I have cut four pieces of Pool Party that measure one and three eighths by one and three eighths and four pieces of the Animal Expedition that measure one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere each of these to the Pool Party cardstock. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to these four center panels. Okay, so now those are adhered. A quick tip, you just wanna make sure that if you have a directional paper that they're all running in the same direction. Now I'm gonna grab some tear and tape adhesive and I'm gonna run that along this half of an inch tab here. And I'm running the tear and tape right up to the score line as opposed to the edge of the cardstock. Okay, now because of the way we have our score lines, I'm not able to fold this to meet up the two ends. So I just have to gently kind of folding on that score line and bring the other end up to it. And what I'm doing is just lining up both the edge of the cardstock as well as the score line and kind of get that section going. And now it'll make it easier for me to then continue lining up all the rest of the way down. And then I just press from the inside to reinforce that. Now, here's what's really cool. You just wanna start to pinch on that little half inch section there. And because of those diagonal score lines, it should fall into place. So again, let's go ahead and pinch and it falls into place. I love that. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of reinforcement here kind of bend these ends back and forth a little bit and I'm being gentle. And then I'm just gonna kind of pinch on these diagonal score lines just to sharpen them a little bit. Now you'll see that we have a seam along the back so that's gonna be our bottom. And then let's do a little bit of stamping here. We're gonna use the Animal Outing stamp set in this sentiment, thank you big time. I'm gonna stamp that in Call Me Clover on Whisper White. We're gonna punch that out with the one and a quarter inch circle punch. And then I'm gonna punch out a one and three eighths inch scallop circle from Call Me Clover. We'll layer that behind the sentiment. And I'm gonna pop that up on dimensionals. And I'm just gonna add a little rhinestone to the sentiment. And then the final thing is to add our little gift. So let's slide in the two tea lights. Be a little bit of a snug fit going in, but then you'll feel them pop into place right in the center of that box. How cute is this candy wrapper box? I love the design. What a great way to give a sweet little gift or some candy 
perfect around the holidays. I just fell in love with this project. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project details, measurements, and a picture of the template for this project. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my daily blog updates as well as my monthly newsletter, and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in earning a discount on your Stampin' Up! products, I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies. And you can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.